Hey you going? Chris here from Production Coaching Civil Earthworks. Uh, today I'd like to share a video which um, it really touches home and it's something very important to me within the videos that I do and the reason why I'm doing these video, videos and sharing this information and trying to help people hit the ground running and help them for even moving forward in their career in uh, all different levels where I've been lucky enough to advance up and operate different machines and, and see things outside of the circle of just operating my machine and not fully knowing what's happening on behind the scenes as well. So today I really want to touch base on uh, load and haul and the expectations of a haul truck operator. Um, when I first came into the industry I started in the um, uh, load and haul trucks and there's things that I didn't quite pick up until I actually jumped into a different machine and got to see it from the other side and the other point of view. And just seeing the things that will break down the culture and create frustration within operating and, and so on. So this is the information that I want to share. So even if you're just starting in the industry and you're in a load and haul truck, you can get a slight glimpse of what, say, a loader operator or, or in this case, an excavator or even a dozer operator, what they experience when you're working within that team environment and you're working with them and you're tipping your loads off and what impact sometimes um, your loading style or your load and haul um, attitude and, uh, or be the best way to say, and, and your skill level would um, impact their day as well. So. In this case, how um, where I work now, I'm very lucky that I work with some really good load and haul operators. I also am lucky enough to work with um, some very green ones, or very new to the industry, load and haul operators, and you can see how they're improving, how they're growing, just simply by sometimes some of the stuff that I'm trying to say as well, and just also the good culture we've got in the team and the other, uh, other operators sharing the information as well. Uh, but we've also got the operators that quite aren't uh, understanding it to the full extent and that could be like I just mentioned quite possibly because they've only really operated uh, load and haul trucks and they haven't had the opportunity to see it from a different point of view. So I want to touch base on just three small ones, small little topics, but they have, they have got the greatest uh, point for impact and improving. So this one here is going to be good for load and haul truck operators that are either just starting out or want to actually advance in their career because you get this uh, good work ethic right and the good attitude towards load and haul, um, it, it has the potential to advance you up. Your bosses will see it and you can progress into different chains. So we'll touch base on truck positioning. I've got another video on all different styles of uh, loading, but in this one we're going to quickly touch base on just say a loading area and also an unloading area. So within the positive attitude towards load and haul, this is the expectations that you should have when you're operating a machine. So let's say in this example, this operator in the machine wants you to load 45 degrees to it. So you're coming in on this angle right here at 45 degrees. The main goal here is, I know you, it doesn't matter if you're just starting or if you've been in a long time, the attitude should be, I want to hit that mark pretty much spot on every single time. And that's what your goal should be. Um, and when it comes down to that, some operators I've experienced, um, they kind of feel that close enough is almost good enough. When in a perfect world, if you can get your machine at 45 degrees like the operators instructed you to do to your best ability, you're going to make their life a lot easier. And it's about that teamwork. It's about you getting in position to the best of your ability and hitting that mark every single time. So he or she's day is going to be a lot easier as well because you're actually, you work, you're gelling in that team environment and the good expectation of a load and haul operator is to say if they want you at 45 degrees, hit that mark every time. If they want you at 90 degrees, hit that mark every time or to the best of your ability. It doesn't mean that mistakes don't get made. They do get mistake made now and then, and you, you, you can be off by a little bit. But it's about having the attitude towards, that's not good enough for me as an operator. I want to hit it a lot better. So that's what I want to touch base on, just briefly on the loading area. 
So we'll move that and we'll bring up just say a fill area. And in truck positioning, we're going to do, we'll touch base on um, the phrase of on the blade and also um, understanding what actually on the blade is in the most common sense or common knowledge kind of way because as a say a dozer operator if you've only ever been in a truck you don't know exactly how this operator is thinking and what the next moves are going to be always going to be so in some cases if hypothetically you're coming in on a truck just say you're passing this operator's asked you to put it on the blade every i think every country's got its own different um, terminology of it but within Australia, one of the most common ones is on the blade, and that's, that's right. But this operator is wanting you to put your machine and tip your load roughly on the blade, not on the blade, but at the blade. Now, one thing that I have noticed, and one thing that I learned long ago, is that when the operator is saying on the blade, he wants you to be pretty much bang on center. Because depending on the fill area, the operator will put that machine in a position because he, he or she knows that when you tip off, your load could spill over or so and so. So he's put that machine in a certain spot because he wants you to try to hit that mark. So, and I have seen it on numerous occasions where you'll say on the blade and the truck operator will be off the side by two meters or something. And that's not ideal, especially in the expectations and the attitude we should have as load and haul operators. The most common one is you really got to strive to get it on the blade, right in the centre. And the best way that I've always worked out to do that is obviously you've got your two mirrors. You kind of want to see in your rear mirrors roughly the same gap. Because obviously all this here, unless you're using a reverse camera, you're not going to see. It's in your blind spot. You are going to see the sides of the machine. A lot of these machines do have cameras but they shouldn't always be used as your first point of call. These mirrors are your main use. And that's, that's one of the ways that I've found that as an operator, you hit the mark every single time on the blade. So you come in, square it up, drive forward a fair bit, and you're able to square it up a lot neater. And like the loading, you're making this operator's job a little easier because you've hit your mark. And and that's the goal that we should have as load and haul operators. Because this operator's got a whole different world of things that he or she's trying to accomplish. And they could also have a lineup of trucks behind them. So if you hit your mark wrong, it potentially can slow down everything behind you because you've missed your mark. So something to keep in mind, especially with the uh, on the blade um, phrase, because it's, a, it's, it's quite important. We'll get rid of that. Now, tipping off. We'll touch base on. We'll touch base on two things. Um, one would be roughly um, running air loads and understanding what toe to toe and stuff like that is when tipping off. So, if this operator is asks you to run it out. And this can be challenging, and it, uh, it's challenging within um, all different kind of materials because some, some materials will fall out of your tub a lot quicker than others. Some will get hung up there and then it comes down a big clump. But as a load and haul operator, your goal should be when you're tipping off, if the operator's asked you to run it out, or run it out the best you, you can, if you can, kind of look back in your mirror and just see how you've done. If you've created a massive hole and then a big clump right at the end, you kind of miss your mark there. And mistakes do happen, and every now and again I still misjudge it and I don't run it out the best, best I can. But it's about wanting to, it's wanting to strive to belt it in and or to get it right, to get it right look as well as you can. So if running out, running out is most definitely just try to look back and see how are you actually done? Sometimes you might get some feedback from a grader or dozer operator or compactor, but if you don't, obviously try to look back and just see how you're done and try to improve on that. Work out how the machines and the materials coming out and see if you can grow from that. 
because as an expectation, if you can run out good and you're working within a fill area with the dozer operator and you've made their day a little bit easier because you've tipped it off in the right way, it, uh, it definitely improves your competency level as an operator and can propel you forward because the, the operators here could be calling for you to tip off to them all the time because they just they want you there because you do it right. Um, another one I wanted to touch base on with tipping off, I've, I've, I've explained it briefly in, a, in another video, but when, when tipping off, if an operator has asked you to tip off toe to toe, let's call these, these are two, say stock, uh, stock balls or two, two loads out of a truck, the operator wants you to hit that mark to the best you can. And that's what I've also noticed within some operators, they, they believe their job possibly could just be from moving dirt from point A to point B, and as soon as they put their bin down and drive off, their job's done. But if an operator of a dozer or something has asked you to go toe to toe, to create that bit of a void for when they're pushing out the load, that's what you should be striving for. You shouldn't just tip off and then drive off thinking that, that's, that's enough. Once again, look in your mirrors. If you've got that reverse camera, look in the back and just see where it's starting to tip. If it's, if it's gonna be piled up here, move forward just that half a meter or so, so when you do tip off, you actually hit the mark. So these are the expectations that some operators don't have, but if you had this uh, work ethic in the culture, and you, try, and you try your utmost best to, say, do loads like that, you're going to be a lot more competent operator and you're going to be uh, more sought after and it can propel you forward in your career, I believe. Um, and another one, reading films. We'll touch base on that real quick. I don't want to make this video too long, sorry. Righto. As truck operators, obviously, if you've never been in a dozer, you quite not... You don't always know what this person's uh, tasks are or what they're trying to do. So if this operator is tipping off a fill and he or she is working left to right, so there's left and there's right. This, this is a double-edged sword, this one, because this operator, operator here should also be trying their utmost best to set up a fill area which is very easy and very um, smooth to run and work with because also their job is to try to help you out in getting your job right as well. For example, if this operator is, hasn't informed you that they're working left or right or, or they don't have the opportunity to, they could be over here, over here, and that causes, um, it, it can cause confusion because you, when you come up to the field, you're not quite sure where this operator wants you. So, when reading a fill, like I said, it's the operator's here um, opportunity uh, position as well to get it right, to, to help you get it right. But when you come in, if it's left or right, and it's been that way all day, nothing should have changed. So, there's going to be some small things that a lot of operators do, I do it myself, to try to help you out. Let's say in this example, we're working left or right, and I, I place my machine here, and you're coming up on this on this way here. I've seen it many times where this operator will want to put it up here on the left or something. The reason this operator is sitting there, and the reason why I'm sitting there, is to kind of block that way and to kind of guide you into exactly where I want it. Because sometimes, if you're coming up from half a kilometre away, you can't quite see the fill until you're right up on top of it. So you can use these little markers as a bit of a guide, and this is what a lot of operators do. They'll kind of use it as a guide to say, we're still going left to right, and your next load is on the far right. And you can come in there with confidence, knowing that that is where the operator needs you. So when it comes to reading the fills, it's not about making assumptions, because that's where you can, you can get a bit in the bum, bum in the, with that as well, because, <clears throat> you can get it wrong. Or you can come in too close. You've got to have those post-coms, but you also want to try to try to strive to read a fill. 
and they go two ways. You do your utmost best as an operator to read a read a fill in your own opinion, but it's also trying to understand how this operator works and learn how he or she operates as well, and it gives you that understanding. Drop my pen, awesome. So that's just a short one on just a couple of aspects within load and haul and the expectations. And to try to highlight the simple fact that as a load and haul operator, your job doesn't end when you just get loaded and when you tip off. It's about working in within the team of every other machine to help them out as they are going to try to, they should be trying to help you out in, in your fill areas. So it's, it's about joining, it's about working in and gelling as a team and trying to change the culture where the truckies are apparently the lowest domino, denominator. I think I said that wrong anyway. Because the amount of times I've heard a loader or excavator operator saying that he or she's loaded out bloody 100 trucks in the day, well, he or she didn't do that. Everyone done it as a team because without the trucks, they couldn't have done their job. Just the same as a uh, grader or a, or a dozer compactor cop boasting about how much fill or how many layers they've done in a day. They didn't quite all do it. We all done it as a team. And if we all start um, really reading into the expectations as an operator, you can, um, you can really gel in that a little bit more. So I won't harp on it any, anymore. I think I've, I've said enough. But there's just a couple of little um, examples that can help you out as a truck operator when just starting out or wanting to just see a different perspective and seeing the perspective of, say, a dozer operator and seeing what they go through a little bit. So thanks for your time. Hopefully this has been uh, beneficial in some ways. So thank you.